Oh, Jesus. Welcome to Harder Tube. <laughs> Hell yeah, welcome to Harder Tube. I fucking love when you do that, man. Hey, by the way, I'm Josh. And I'm Rob. <laughs> I don't know why I chose to do that that way, but this, as Josh said, is Harder Tube. This is our unscripted show, our unscripted bi weekly show. <laughs> it's horror in a tube. It's horror in a tube. <laughs> <laughs> um, this show we are very free form, freestyle. Don't give a fuck. Oh yes. And with that, we also tell you what we smoked right before we uh, I don't started the name recording. Of it. And I don't remember the name of mine either today. So we literally don't know what we smoked. Didn't you smoke purple gelato? It, I, you know what? It actually probably was purple gelato because that's part of the fucking um. That's part of the uh, eighth. Yeah. Zoinks, I'm really high. <laughs> like Scoob. <laughs> so. Could you imagine eating a triple decker like sandwich like they did on Scooby Doo? Oh Which my God. technically is considered horror, could be considered horror because it's still spooky. We we could talk about Scooby Doo in fucking. So that could October. be another episode of Otta Doob. Yeah, we could talk about Scooby Doo yeah. in October. And. Josh has some fucking banger episodes Thanks, for man. Horror Tube. <laughs> Uh, coming down the pipeline. Um, speaking of banger, oh yes, today's horror tube is is nostalgia one hundred and one. Mm-hmm. Today's horror tube, our main topic, the topic that Josh lovingly creates every week. We have a nice discussion to, and then we kind of break away and talk about other things. Yeah, you know. We save and, it for the dude. Yeah, and this conversation is not scripted. Nothing about this conversation is fucking written, predetermined, anything like that. So, sir, I see you with your Wiki page up. Oh, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and... Uh, just so we can spread in some facts along the nostalgia. So why don't just you, going, remember this? Why don't you give him the first reading of the paragraph to Celebrity Deathmatch? Well... The one thing I, I, that just blew my mind is this shit was so popular mm-hmm. that it was just as popular as Beavis and Butthead and Daria back in the day. Yep. But yeah, Celebrity Deathmatch, it's literally what it sounds like. It was basically wrestling, claymation style, yep. with actual celebrities. They used their likeness and everything. I don't think they got the... Sometimes they got the actual actor to voice them. I Sometimes. Know that. Some. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah, was, he was his like voice. A recur- uh, uh, recurring character. The know. ref was actually the ref. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a couple other people. Like Marilyn Manson, I think, was actually yep. involved with it as well. Um, so yeah, you, you had a lot of uh, star power yep. in Celebrity Deathmatch. Jesus, Jack Nicholson was a co-host. Yeah. Holy shit. So, I mean... The the reason that I kind of thought of this as horror is because the first time I saw it, it was it was 98. Yeah. So, I was just a, a sprout, and I saw that shit on MTV. Right. And it scared the shit out of me. Watching, basically, like, a celebrity, I didn't really even know who it was. Literally reach into another dude's mouth and pull out, like, half their spine. Yeah. And Claymation already scared the shit out of me. I've right. always thought that was, like, kind of creepy. Right. And that bitch hit my windshield hard as hell. I thought it was a bug. I think it was an acorn. Oh. I thought it was a bug that just, like, dive-bombed into the fucking windshield. (laughs) Oh, speaking of that, we are at Josh's. We are outside. You hear nature. You hear your ASMR going on in the background that we provide you every other week. And it's pretty early. I like that it's it's ASMR cast. Yeah, it's ASMR cast. It's us talking in our raspy voices. Oh, yeah. Our high raspy voices and fucking listening to nature and automobiles. (laughs) <laughs> and sweating our balls off today. Oh, yes. Yes. So, back to Celebrity Deathmatch. Sorry, I just wanted to put that little quick aside in there. No, you're good. Okay. But they, they did bring it back for yeah. like two years. Yeah, and it wasn't. And I'm, it's I don't know why it, it kind of died out, if you think about it. I mean, because were, it was on MTV2. Oh, yeah. It was on MTV2. It had the highest numbers on MTV2. 
for like the first couple episodes, but I guess everybody then remembered that it was on MTV too. And I forgot that was even a thing. Nobody watches MTV too. So after like the first two episodes, it dive bombed to like two hundred thousand people maybe watching it. And that was still big numbers for MTV too, but it wasn't it wasn't what it was should have been. I'm pretty sure they released a game about that show. They, they did. They did for the they PS2, did. I think. Uh, for the Xbox, for the PC, for the GameCube. Um, and it was trash. It was absolute fucking dumpster fire. Yep. Yes, they did have the um, the same claymation stuff going on. It came out in 2003. It was after, yeah, it was like, if I'm not mistaken, that's after the series was done. Yeah, I think the original ran from 1998 to 2003. Three? Hold on. Two, 2002. Okay, so yeah, it came out after it wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, th- so, to three years after. So no wonder it flopped. It was a year after because you said the game came out in 2003. I thought I said 2005 for the game. I thought you said three. Sorry, zoinked. 2003, yeah. Okay, all right, so one year after it was done. <laughs> they literally waited a fucking year until it was done yeah, yeah. to make that. a video game. Yeah. Why? Why wouldn't you capitalize on that while the show was still going on? Or at least like on its final run. Right. At least put something. it on the final episode or something. Did you really think that that game was going to make fucking money for you right. and generate any cash when it's been canceled for a fucking year? <laughs> I forgot about MTV too. That's so fucking crazy. <laughs> like, and then did you know about the fucking German version of it? I did not. There was a German version after the American version was um, canceled. So they literally took Celebrity Deathmatch and then just put a whole bunch of German stars I was about to say, in the hey, same in the same position that we had our American stars in. It's crazy. And it lasted like three seasons. It was also in Canada. They also premiered in Canada, but it was only for the later seasons. Right. right. And then it was gone <laughs> and then, you know, they revived it for two oh. seasons. Right here. Original network, MTV nineteen ninety eight to two thousand two and then MTV two. Yep. On 2006 to 2007. Yep. <laughs> and then Earlier. there was another company that produced a um, uh, pilot episode. And it was Katy Perry versus Lady Gaga or something like that. And it never got picked up. Oh, sure. And that was in 2017 or 2016. I was about to say, it says in April 2015, MTV2 oh. announced a reboot of the series. However, in 2016, yep. Fogel stated via Twitter that MTV did not pick up the pilot to the series. Yep. That's crazy. And in 2018, Ice Cube took the oh. reins, and he stated in 2018 and then again in like 2021 that they were still working on how they wanted to do the show and their presentation and everything for it. So Ice Cube has control of Celebrity Deathmatch right now. It says, as of 2023, the revival from 2006 is available to watch on Paramount+. Plus. Yep. yep, I watched the two seasons of it on Paramount+, Plus uh, over the course of the last week. Nice. To get in preparation for this. And I also watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, and I'm going to have a uh, compilation from one of the YouTube videos and this video. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, I'm actually going to... I got permission from the creator to take the montage that they made... And I'm going to put it at the end of our oh, sure. episode here today. Yep. So, you already said that the, the claymation scared you yes. when you were little. What was it about claymation that scared you? Because that's where you were talking and we kind yeah. of got cut off and then started it, talking again. It's because it, I don't know, I think even even to this day, that kind of style of animation, it just weirds me out. On Netflix, I forget the name of it, it's kind of horror-esque. It's three mm-hmm. mini-stories. And, like, one of them features, like, it's, like, uh, an animal world, but they, you know, they walk around as humans and stuff. They don't have human bodies, but it's, like, a rat walking on two feet wearing, okay. like, clothes. And it's made, like, kind of, like, claymation. Like, one of them's claymation. One of them's, like, puppet style. And it's that kind of shit has always freaked me out. And it goes back to that. It's just, claymation just looks so fucking strange to me. So is that one of your big beefs with Nightmare Before Christmas? Kind of. Do you think that that might be, like, because... I know you. I know you. I know you shit on Nightmare Before Christmas As a in joke. a joking yeah. manner. I know that you you have respect for the movie. I, watch I know it. that you may not like it like you do a lot of other movies, and I know yeah. you joke about it. But I know you respect Nightmare Before Christmas, and I do love and one song from that movie. So what, Jack's Lament? Uh, no, the Oogie Boogie song. Oh, Oogie Boogie yeah. Man. Whoa. Yep. Um, 
I am the Oogie Boogie Man. I am just filled with fucking dead things. Um, <laughs> but I, I do enjoy that movie more now since I finally gave right. it a real shot. But, but it but, is creepy to me. Yeah, I was going to say, in your youth was movies like that yes. and James and the Giant Peach because yep. Jack is in James and the Giant Peach. Yep. So that might... Oh, 100%. I kind of put two and two together right mm-hmm. there about that. And like maybe that was your disdain for that movie for a while. And here's a movie that could be... That I think... I don't know if you, you've probably heard of it, but... Um, what was it called? It was a uh, Chicken Run with Mel oh, Gibson. Oh yeah, Chicken Run. That actually fucking scared me really? when I was younger. Really? Because it just looked terrifying. The expressions of the those, expressions on the, the chickens' faces when they saw the one's head getting chopped off and yeah. shit. And that could be considered hard. Yeah. When you think about it. Yeah. Save it for another heart, dude. Wallace maybe. and Gromit. And those scared me too. Oh, my it's, gosh. oh shit, Jesus. Sorry. It's the same. It's the same people. Yep. If you guys just heard that, that was um. Things getting moved around. That's my bad. I pulled the. Josh forward. was getting super excited talking about claymation, even though it scares the bejesus out of him. Because I've, I've, <laughs> that's one thing I've never been able to talk about, and I forget sometimes. It's like claymation was something that used to scare the shit out of me. Yeah. Even like I like the movie Coraline, but it took me a while to watch that shit. I don't remember if it was the Adventures of Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer or something like that, but it was a claymation and it had Albert Einstein in it. And they went to hell. Mm-hmm. And the devil had like this whole nine minute montage of humanity and mm-hmm. what it is to be human mm-hmm. and what it means to sacrifice and what it means. Like, dude, it was one of the creepiest things and it was in a fucking kids movie. Ugh. Yeah. And I watched that shit every fucking night for like two months straight because I apparently didn't want to sleep. Because it's like, if you watch that shit high or you watch yeah. that shit on a different, like, mm-hmm. altering thing, it's fucking wild. Yeah, man. Claymation can be fucking scary. And I can understand seeing bones and guts and yeah. things exploding for a younger person mm-hmm. at that time being fucking horrifying. Especially if Claymation already was like an uncanny valley to you to begin with. There is a, um, on YouTube right now, there is a Claymation Simpsons short that's horror, and it's based off of, um, oh my goodness, what's that horror film where they have the, the dudes have the three masks on, it's a sheep, a wolf, and something? You're next. You're next. They yeah. did it that style with Simpsons characters, and oh even now, God. it freaks me the fuck oh, out. Oh, I gotta watch that. I'll, I'll send it to you. It's on YouTube. Hell yeah, send me that shit. That sounds fucking amazing. But. Fucking terrifying. But I think that is the reason why Celebrity Deathmatch did so well. Because it hit at the time where the WWF was at its most popular at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. At that time. 100%. The, the WWE now, and yes, I did say F and E because they are two different companies. They are two different entities. And at the time, in 1998, it was known as the World Wrestling Federation. They Shout did out not, to WWF. Right. They did not lose to the World Wildlife Fund in, an arg- yeah. in, a, in a lawsuit yet. They were still the WWF. So I am going to talk about them accordingly to the years when I do discuss WWE. And Rob is the wrestling guru here. Uh, Yeah, uh, come at me, bro. (laughs) I am that guy, pal. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) But no, like, to capitalize off of the WWE at that time being in the most popular that it was at that time, because one can contend that the WWE is more popular than ever now. Yeah. With the amount of money that they rake in. But to have Stone Cold Steve Austin be one of the voices in your fucking show. Yep. Dude, that was insane at that point. That's why that's one of the main reasons why Celebrity Deathmatch did such fucking numbers. Yep. Because Stone Cold Steve Austin was doing Stone Cold Steve Austin shit in clay form. And we got to see it be brutal as shit. Yeah, we got to see him balls off and shit. Yeah, we got to see him literally smash people's heads in with chairs and this and that. Shout out Chris Benoit. He also put um, Vince McMahon in it too. Yeah. So technically you still got to see Stone Cold versus Vince McMahon in real time on TV or pay per view. And and then you got in in play. So you finally got to see a match that'd be brutal as shit. Yeah. Yeah. One thousand percent. It was fucking great. It was awesome. Celebrity death match was also great because you got to see like the most outlandish fucking bands or artists or actors 
go against each other. Yep. You know? Let me see if I can um, find a couple other matches. It's crazy. Uh, the first ever match. The first ever match was Marilyn Manson oh, against um, Charles Manson. That Holy was the first shit. ever thing they did. It was in an animated short because there was a, a thing on MTV. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I heard it in a documentary. Uh, Cartoon Sushi. Cartoon Sushi mm. was on mm-hmm. MTV. And that is where Celebrity Deathmatch came from. Much like Eon Flux and The Max came from Liquid Television. Um, and, and Beavis and Butthead came from Liquid Television. Um, you know... That show spawned Celebrity Deathmatch. Mm-hmm. Um, they were they were kind of like what you could compare to now is like you know the Death Battle series or whatever that is. Where yeah, they put like on anime YouTube and, and stuff. Comic yeah, where they come like One Punch Man against Goku. Yeah, kind of like that. Shit like that. Yeah, like one of them was Mariah Carey versus Jim Carrey. <laughs> right, that was a big fight in Celebrity Deathmatch. Mariah Carey versus Jim Carrey. If I'm not mistaken, when uh, the match ended, Mariah Carey hit the high note and like blew his blew brain off blew his brains out. Yeah, that uh, shit was fucking funny. David Letterman versus Jay Leno. Yep, that was a match that everybody wanted to see in real life because the bat. Look, you in 2023, nobody understands how important late night yep. talk shows were yep. in the 90s. They were important in the 70s and mm. the 80s. Everybody loved Letterman. Everybody loved Leno. Da 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 da. And then in the nineties is when it really took off because I have I have a sneaking suspicion that that the late night talk shows got as popular as they did in the nineties because you had wrestling fans watching them, because you had Jay Leno interacting with Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman and the NWO and Jay Leno and Kevin Eubanks being in a fucking wrestling match against Hogan and Rodman. At WCW Hog Wild in 99 or some shit like that. The NWO took over the Tonight Show for a mm-hmm. whole fucking episode. Yep. You had that type of shit. And David Letterman has always been associated with wrestling because of the fucking... Um, the, the Jerry the King Lawler and Andy Kaufman situation yep. that happened yep. on his show. Where, where Andy smacked the fuck out of uh, Jerry on the show. Yep. You know, they're very heavily influenced by wrestling. And what goes off at 11 o'clock on Mondays? Wrestling. Yep. What starts at 1130? Late night talk shows. Yep. But again, it's so crazy how influential the WWF was in the 98 and the 99 era. Because you did have the in a wrestling ring. And it was wrestling moves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it was it's just wild how fucking popular it was at that time frame. Like the whole thing is just crazy to me. Yep. And the fact that we had what was it, Eminem versus fucking uh Oh my god. I'm hmm. forgetting it. Was it Fred Durst? Probably. They had the Backstreet Boys versus the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Al Pacino yep. versus Robert De Niro. Yep. Another fucking match that everybody would have loved to see in real life. Ice Cube versus Ice T. Yep. Yep. Uh, me, me, me. Jennifer Aniston versus C- Courtney Cox versus Lisa uh, Kudrow. Ah, the fucking milk toast cast. <laughs> uh, Busta Rhymes versus William Shakespeare. <laughs> oh my god. Emeril Lagasse versus, and seriously, this is the title: Emeril Lagasse versus two fat ladies. Oh yeah, there was a, there was a cooking show called The Two Fat Ladies back in the eighties, early nineties, until they died. Jesus, Ron Jeremy versus Tommy Lee. God damn, yeah. Alanis wow. Morissette versus Jewel. Damn, Jewel. I haven't heard yeah. that in a while. Speaking of Jewel, um, I found out that Jewel and Mick Foley are real life like best friends. Really? Yes. Yeah, Jewel goes to his comedy shows. That's cool. And she really enjoyed it when he was wrestling and stuff. Like, th- yeah, it's awkward. <laughs> what else? Let's see. Ozzy Osbourne versus Rob Zombie. Yeah, that was a good one. Didn't Ozzy turn into a bat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, Flea versus Kenny G. That's weird <laughs> judge judy versus judge mills lane wow yes he's Hell fucking yes. names eminem versus kid rock kid rock is what it was yeah 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 because kid rock was 
cool with ICP or something like that. And then late nineties and Eminem and ICP had beef. Yep. Man, if y'all if y'all wasn't around for the drama of the fucking nineties, Jesus Christ. Back when Eminem was uh, beefing with everybody and anybody that he possibly could and secretly smashing Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Some crazy ass times, bro. Hell yeah. Celebrity, that's... Celebrity death match. It definitely fueled some flames. It fandom. fueled some fandom flames, man. Yeah. Like, it came at the right fucking yep. time. I bet you if Celebrity death match came out now this generation wouldn't have any kind of love for it. Yeah. Because this generation doesn't know about supporting an actual artist. Yeah. They don't know, like, you you got TikTok, you got 30-second fucking drip feeds, you've got yeah. all that. You can get flashes of people's lives in 30 seconds and da 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 it, It's the way entertainment is consumed now. But back in the fucking 90s, you literally followed people from the beginning of their career to the end. Yep. Yep. You know, we got to see all this crazy shit happen on TRL. Oh, my God. I'll never fucking forget. I will never forget the day that Iowa came out. Oh, yeah. Slipknot's second album. The day that fucking Iowa came out, there were so many fucking fans in the audience outside at Times Square while it was raining. And I'll never forget all the costumes, everything, and that Left Behind actually made it to number one on TRL. That's something that I'll fucking remember forever. And for those who don't know what that is, that's Total Request Live. Yes, Carson Daly was the host. And that's where, that's where you got to see some actual crazy real mm -hmm. life shit go down. You know, I was, I, there's a couple documentaries on it. Like, there was multiple times where celebrities just showed up. Yep for no fucking reason to fight another celebrity because yep. they were there yep. or to come on and promote something that they didn't have permission to fucking promote yep. or do something that they didn't have permission to do. Like TRL was a fucking madhouse. It was like the Jerry Springer of MTV, but with music and stuff. And it's with, yeah. Nuts. And with actual people, not actors. I mean, some can contend that yeah. the music world was a big act in the nineties anyway. But then 106 and Park came out on Choo! BET and did the same Throw thing back. for the fucking rap community yep. that, that, that TRL was doing for the pop and rock community. Yep. It's fucking crazy how shit was. And then Celebrity Deathmatch hit right yep. at that fucking time period. Are you really going to have a match with Lil Dirk versus Lil Uzi Vert right now? Who's yeah. going to give a fuck about that? Yeah. Who is going to give a fuck about that everyone's in a celebrity got, death match form? Everyone's got beef with everyone in this fucking world and, it, now. and nobody cares. Yeah. The beefs aren't fucking like... Not to say that our generation had like the most special things, but bro, Tupac and Biggie died in our fucking generation, in our timeline, okay? It, that, that was one of the biggest fucking beefs of all time. And that spurned on uh, the celebrity... Maelstrom from the 90s on. After that, Princess Diana fucking died and this and that. Like, Started shit, the whole East shit became... West Coast shit. Yeah, yeah, celebrities became such a big fucking thing in the 90s. Mm. They were big beforehand, but we're reaching blockbuster fucking numbers. The summer blockbuster officially becomes a thing with Jaws in like 79. Which is still horror. Which is still horror. But it was the 90s, the late 80s, early 90s, where you started to see these movies fucking come Tarantino out. Tarantino. Yeah, coming that out in summertime, being these big blockbuster well, fucking now, crazy productions. Yep. Celebrity status got huge. Mm -hmm. And when fucking Celebrity Deathmatch hit, music, movies, wrestling, all forms of entertainment, paparazzi shit, yep. everything was so fucking big. That's why Celebrity Deathmatch was so good. Because it took all of those fucking people that you're never going to get again. Yep. You're never going to get the Al Pacinos mixed in with the Clint Eastwoods, mixed in with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because they wouldn't like, want to let their, their likeness be used without getting some big ass right, check every time. Right. I mean, come on. Right now, we literally just said we would talk about this. The Screen Actors Guild just went yep. on strike. Yep. Because it's all about AI now. Yep. So now they want to fucking scan you. And then have your likeness forever. They and only want to pay you. you for one fucking day's worth of work. And then if they want you to be in another fucking movie, they can put you in that movie and not pay you. 
That's what the fucking Hollywood wants done. They don't want to give residuals to people if they want to use their likeness in a fucking another movie. But you can't use someone's music just for like a, a 10 second clip on right. YouTube or something. And then Bob Iger going to come out and say that, that the actors have unrealistic expecta expectations. No, they want residuals for their likeness being yeah. used. They don't mind being AI scanned. They don't mind any of that. But if you're going to put them in the fucking background and use their models as a background, yeah. pay them motherfuckers. Yeah. Give them X amount of dollars to it? use their things. Yeah, because you scan them. They were popular enough for you to fucking use them or you wanted them enough to use them. Continue to pay them. Not to bring it back to wrestling again, but they pay them. Mm -hmm. All that shit on the WWE Network, CM Punk still gets a fucking paycheck for that shit. Seriously? Yeah. Even though Peacock owns the WWE Network right now, CM Punk still gets residuals from the WWE Monthly on any time somebody clicks a CM Punk match or segment on WWE Network. Damn. Every wrestler gets that. Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, Scott Hall's family, this, that. Every wrestler gets X amount of dollars because of the streaming deal that they worked out before the WWE Network hit. Mm. And that's how it should be done. They should get money for their likeness being yeah. used. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they should get top dollar. But they should get something. Yeah. I just went on a fucking rampage there. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, that's what hard tube is all about. Mm hmm Keep it unhinged over here. Mm hmm No script to nothing. But that, but I mean, come on. And that's just horror in the world because yeah. that is holding back so many movies and fucking shows being yep. filmed. AI is going to be the downfall of humanity. We already knew that 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 it was coming, but they've they've just let it get mm. so far now <laughs> it's fucking tell this to a caveman and they'll think we're fucking sorcerers yeah hey yeah. shadow, wizard money, gang. <laughs> shadow <laughs> wizard money gang we love casting spells. but no man like but the, again that's where celebrity death match was so pivotal because back in that time period yeah. you could get away with using someone's likeness yeah. and parodying them now you have to go through litigation after litigation to understand what a parody is. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, you. I was just thinking about this a couple days ago. I wanted to use war pigs. Yeah. Okay. But after thinking about it, I'm not using Ozzy's war pigs. Mm. I'm using a cover. Okay. Because... They don't own that copyright and they're making money off of it. Well, we're not making money off of it. No. So I'm going to use a cover. Okay. And I'm also going to use um, quotes from horror movies that are in the public domain. Okay. So, like, they're coming to get you, Bob. Nice. I might put in, in a segment or something like that or take away the music that we have. Mm -hmm with Lamont and then put new music underneath yeah, with go. a couple quotes or something leading into the segments. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've but been, I don't I've been like thinking. smiling. Oh, but that's staying. Oh, I love that's, that. that's staying. That's, that's 1000% staying. That is my, one of my that favorite is, parts. <laughs> I know. And I might actually end up putting that with, um, I might pair it with, uh, the list of doom. Oh yes. Because I know that that's your favorite thing in horror wars for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to put, but I don't feel like smiling yeah. paired up with oh. that. Um, yeah, I, I have plans on the segments. Okay, I have excited. plans on the segments, man. Um, but yeah, back to Celebrity Deathmatch before we wrap up our jizz on, on a phenomenal show. Um, we don't have to give our favorite matches. We don't have to do any of that. Because I think it's a series that, like, I feel like if it was never made, like MTV would have went a different route. Even MTV 2. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can understand I, that. It's, I feel like it's an, like a necessity towards TV's history. Yeah. I feel like it's not something that should ever be forgotten, to be honest with you. Yeah, you can forget Pimp My Ride. Oh, you my can God. Forget I actually fucking, forgot about that shit. You can, you can forget Cribs. Ugh. It's fine. They were, those houses were rented anyway. Bro, look at how rich I am, Lamau. And it was all a joke. No. Nah. <laughs> And pit my ride, none of the cars worked after they got no. off the fucking show. And then they got taxed to fucking bejesus. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, nineties was something different, man. <laughs> Wasn't the reality TV also super big in the nineties? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's when the real world was That's like the real world big. and all that shit. Real Bro, world, real world, San, real real world San Francisco was what popped yep. off. I mean, New York, the first season, yeah, yeah. was obviously what made real world crazy. Yeah. But when they hit San Francisco, I believe it was season three. When they hit San Francisco, real world took a whole different fucking ball game. And because of Pedro and because of all the characters, Puck and everybody on that show, that's what really spawned your basic character archetypes in reality shows from that point forward. Season three of Real World, if you watch season three of Real World and you see all the different people that they have in there, that is the archetype that they use for all these yep. different characters in reality TV shows to this day. To this day. You've got the asshole. You've got the whore. You've got the fucking uh, person with some disease that they don't want to talk about. Yep. You've got the you could, people that are becoming a secret couple on the show. Sometimes I have you, someone who's like ultra political or two different religions yep. in the same yep. house. And, and that's all spawned from season fucking three yep. of real world. That is the prototype for how reality television is today. I fucking hate reality TV, bro. Yo. But TV has gone through some shit. TV has like, and now it's slowly dying out. With yeah. All these because fucking, nobody can consume like television. Yep. Unless of course you're talking about football. Yep. UFC or the news. If you watch it all the time. And WWE. Yep. Those are those are the big things on television. Well, you could also uh, lump, like, I don't know, basketball and baseball. Basket, that, right? Look, baseball. Sports in general. Sports in general do big numbers, okay? But the biggest fucking number getter is the NFL. In There's America, No, no, no. Around the world, really? the biggest number. Yeah, I mean... Football is the biggest around the world. Oh yeah, that's probably like the, the biggest. That's the sport. yeah. The, that's millions. that yeah. Football and fucking Formula One racing, and yeah, and yeah. fucking rugby and shit like that. Like that sports in general. Th yeah, but in the United States, absolutely, the NFL is the fucking big dog, and it is becoming a big thing over in the UK. I was gonna say they're starting, they're starting to have yeah. games in. They're London starting to show. have games. They've had games in London for like the last five six years. They're getting ready to have a game in Germany. Yep. And all that shit. Like, they're expanding awesome. worldwide. So, I mean, and, and again, not to bring it back to WWE, but since they've been doing international events, like going and doing Backlash in Puerto Rico, yep. packing that fucking place with almost 20,000 people, Bad Bunny wrestling in the... Bad Bunny is the biggest fucking star in the entire world, and this man's like, nah, bro, let me get in between the ropes and take bumps. Yeah. Bad Bunny does not need to do that. That motherfucker came out on an episode of Raw in a vintage 1998 WWF Attitude Era production crew jacket. Oh, shit. Do you know how hard that shit is to get a hold of? And he threw it into the fucking audience. What? What? Bad Bunny does not need to fucking do this shit. And the WWE has that. Logan Paul is a fucking contracted WWE superstar. One of the biggest internet personalities in the entire fucking world is a contracted WWE superstar. Holy shit, I don't know WWE that. is in one of the biggest positions it's ever been in its entire fucking lifespan. Like I showed you, when Cody Rhodes comes out or when a Roman Reigns bloodline segment is happening on fucking Fox, those are literally like the biggest number drawers in Fox fucking sports right now until the nfl comes back in september oh it's so close it's so close it's so close it's so and we're going to talk about that in a little bit <laughs> but ah. yeah it's wild how entertainment has wholly fucking changed <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and it's crazy that that celebrity death match was a 24 minute fucking show yep. broken down and people stayed because commercials were like six, seven minutes. Yep. You actually got motherfuckers to sit there for 30 minutes to watch a goddamn animated show. A claymation show. A claymation show. That shit's wild. Oh, yes. It's fucking crazy. Like, and also, none of these kids know what it's like to grow up with Saturday morning cartoons. Facts. They got you to sit there for fucking two hours eating the sugar product that they were fucking mm -hmm. peddling that week. Boom. Fucking glory days, man. Yeah, now I don't need anything. Now nobody cares about breakfast. 
Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are coming back, but nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for the millionth time. <laughs> Only for the millionth time. But Celebrity Death Match was amazing. Yes. I know that we kind of veered off, but hey, that's what we do on, on Horror Tube. We, oh, that dude. If, if any episode of Horror Tube was the definition of fucking Horror Tube, this episode is the definition <laughs> of fucking Horror Tube. <laughs> um, so as a show in general... How do you feel the impact of Celebrity Death? Like, how big do you feel Celebrity Deathmatch was? I mean, massive. Look at what it turned into, a 35-minute talk, and we could have probably wrapped it in 10 minutes. Right. But it just goes to show how influential that shit was. Yeah, because it touched so many different styles of entertainment. It's something that if, if anyone has a chance to, to watch the older seasons, like, to be able to watch them in, at all, yeah. just watch them. They're on YouTube. At least once. There's, there's a shit ton of old fights on YouTube. Yep. Um Shit ton of stories, shit ton of everything. There's a couple really good documentaries mm -hmm. on the behind the scenes of Celebrity Deathmatch. They even did a another throwback show was uh, Behind the Music. They did one of that, making it like you get introduced into the world of Celebrity Deathmatch, yeah. where they did like yeah. documentary style for one episode. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah. And people don't even know what the fucking Behind the Music is now. Yeah. They have no fucking clue what that shit is. Pop up video, nobody knows yep. what that is. Nobody oh even cares God, about. Oh my God, the little bubble at the nobody bottom. Nobody even cares about music videos anymore, yep. man. Nobody gives a yeah. fuck. All they care about is if they can be seen together dating for a couple weeks when their new music hits or their new movie hits. Yep. Um, if they can get into a fight. Yep. Um, if they can pull a gun on somebody. Yep. And uh, how many hits their TikTok can get. Yep. And how many um, things their YouTube channel can get monetized with. And which celebrity this year is going to OD on drugs? Yeah, well, they're, we're, we're due for somebody in the rock world to OD. Mm. It's been the rap world for a while. Rap has been taking a lot of OD hits, and also the fact that the sad state that rap is in right now, that Lil Uzi Vert became the number one, the first number one rap album in 2023, and it's July. Wait, Pink Tape? Yeah. Are you serious? That disgusting fucking album is horrible. number one right now. What the fuck? Uh, what are yeah. we doing, humanity? Right, exactly. Do better. Um, so... Mm. I, I do have one more thing I want to talk about. I'm sorry. I just mm -hmm. want to add that in before you I cut you off. I apologize. No, you're fine. You didn't cut me off. Well, uh, we can always talk about these on uh, Horror Wars next week, too, but I figured I'd add into this. It goes to show how pop and horror is this year. I know we usually talk about that a lot and say, like, oh, man, it's coming yeah. back as the games, but I got a little bit of factuals on it. It's just timelines between things coming out. Okay. So, 2023, we got Dead Space returning after a decade. It returned mm -hmm. after a decade. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil 4, the remaster, is back mm -hmm. after 18 years. Mm -hmm. Dead Island returned. Mm -hmm. Finally got Dead Island 2. Yep. After 12 years. Outlast came back after yep. five years, and that's yep. Outlast Trials. Yep. Uh, System Shock returned yep. after 24 years. Yep. That's the predecessor to Bioshock. We have something new with Texas Chainsaw in the game world after 30 years. September. Legit. With the yep. actual... Te with the, with the, with the um, Friday the 13th style yep. game. Which yeah. is it's going to be on Game Pass. I've yep. already got it preloaded. Yep. Um, you, you have Friday the Thirteenth. I'm getting or, or, Friday the Thirteenth. What do you mean you have Texas the, Chainsaw is going to be on Game Pass day oh, one. Nice. So I've got it preloaded in my system. But Friday the Thirteenth is free right now. Also, I, that's a good thing mm -hmm. that you said that uh, to everybody that's listening. Friday the Thirteenth is free with all perks, everything, yep. all every DLC. DLC, all of it unlocked for the next year. I think before yep. they shut down the game. Yep. Really. and it's free. They decided to give it to or it's everybody. It's like a dollar or something. Yeah, they decided to give everything to everybody because yep. it's going away, so fuck it. Yep. Uh, Alan Wake is getting a sequel after Alan 11 years. Yep. Alone in the Dark returns after eight yep. years. Yep. We're getting Silent Hill back after yep. nine years. Oh, bro. Yep. Silent Hill 2. Yep, Silent Hill 2 remake's hitting. And then fucking Clock Tower, bro. Yeah, fucking Clock Tower. We're getting that next year. So, Dude, yeah, horror, after 28 years. Horror in video games is really creeping on the come up, man. Um, I, I'm still so depressed that we'll never see PT. Oh, yeah. PT. I think they should let us re-download that shit, man. PT was just fucking... It was a fucking masterpiece of a demo. That was a nope, demo, That was a man. demo. That was one of... It's it's a nine-hour game and a demo. Yeah. Because of how much lore and creepy yeah. shit is in that. So good, in one man. fucking game, yeah. Yep. I miss it. I want yep. it. All of the theory videos. Yeah. If you guys have never heard of PT, we talked about it in Horror Wars a, a little while ago. Like we kind of yeah. referenced it. Yeah. It was it was gonna be a Silent Hill game and it got canned. Yeah. But I still have the PT demo on my PS4. Yeah, but they won't let you play it. But they won't let you play it. Yeah. That fucking sucks. Yeah. Um. 
when when it was announced as Silent Hills, Hills. Mm-hmm. everybody saw that one trailer with Norman, Norman Reedus, Reedus and all that. But a lot of people didn't know that there was a second trailer that was released at Gamescom. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the most creepiest fucking trailers to a video game I have ever seen in my entire goddamn life. I have never been... Silent Hill 2 creeped me out because in the apartment section, yeah. mm-hmm. it literally looked like the apartments me and my mom were living in mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah. So Silent Hill 2 fucked me up mm. in that respect. Um... But the trailer for Silent Hills, it was all the best things about Grave Encounters. Yep. All the best things about the twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen Blair Witch. Mm-hmm. All the which best was Grave things, Encounters. <laughs> which was Grave Encounters. Yeah, we already know about my rant on that. Um, <laughs> and then it was also uh, one of the best ghost stories ever told. Mm-hmm. Like, it literally looked like it was going to rock you to the fucking core because it was dealing with abortion. It was dealing with babies. It was dealing with a woman's death. Literally, it looked like you killed her and you killed the baby. There's so much lore in that fucking game. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we never got that shit. And all the fucking monsters and everything were dealt around like baby toys. And baby ghost things and all that shit. That game was going to be fucking mortifying mortifying and it turned into death stranding yep hideo kojima was gonna lose his fucking mind on that game and it was and he was co-writing with guillermo del toro bro yeah so you know it was gonna be it was going to be some shit and then they canned it and then we got death stranding and i don't know how i feel about that game i played it and beat it i just i just i mean it's a it's a kojima game so i you'll never understand it mads mickelson mads mickelson did an interview recently where he said that he and norman reedus when they were acting in the game, mm. Hideo Kojima was just trying to get into all the lore and trying to explain it. And he said that they literally just shook their head. Yes. And said, you know what, man, just direct us how you want to direct us. Let's go. Because they didn't understand what they were doing. Yeah, bro. That game makes them no metal gear. I mean, we're getting metal gear. Solid the three remaster. I'm yeah. Getting snake that eater. Yep, yep. But you, no matter what Kojima game you play, you will never understand what the fuck is going on. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. The best, worst video game slash movie ever. That's actually my top five favorite games of all time. I fucking love that game. Oh my god. The fear. The fear. <laughs> the fucking old man. The, what was his name? Um, the what? Oh my gosh. I don't remember. I remember but his, you, eye, his eyes popped out of his head, but you could fast forward your PlayStation. You could fast forward your PlayStation and fucking kill him. What was his name? Now I gotta find out. That's gonna bug the shit out. The end. The end. The end. Yeah. The end. He was a hard boss fight, bro. He was. If you didn't know to to fucking you know just leave the game alone, because that's the thing. The reason why it was found out is because people literally stopped playing Metal Gear Solid Three at the end. Ironically enough, yeah. that's his name was the end because that literally drove people to stop playing Metal Gear Solid Three, and it was their end because you couldn't beat him. He was hard as shit. He was one of the hardest fucking boss fights in the history of boss fights. He was a he was a, a he was like a hundred some years old, but he was like a god tier sniper. And yeah. you're like in the woods and shit. He's got in his blush. domain. It's crazy yeah. as shit. And it took actually years for people to find out that the bird that he had mm-hmm. was giving him signals. So it took people years to find out that you had to kill that bird first. And if you didn't kill that bird, he was going to kill you every fucking time. But what happened was people stopped playing Snake Eater. Snake Eater. But some people started going back after about a week. Well, when they did that, the end was dead. Literally, literally in the game, he was dead. Like Snake walks up to him in the cutscene and he like taps him on the shoulder and the dude just falls over and that's the boss fight. Yes. So you get like a freebie pass. Yes. So then everybody started to just fucking jump their PS3s. Two. They started jumping them ahead a week. So that way it would immediately end the, the boss PS3. fight. That's yeah. Weird. Yeah. Just figure out the mechanic. What? There, nobody could figure out the mechanic. Like I said, it took years Remember, to bro, figure YouTube out Remember, bro, YouTube didn't exist like YouTube that YouTube didn't then. exist. There was there guides. There were strategy guides. But like, not even the strategy guides had shit on how to really do this at that point. But you'd think the game at least like points you in a direction. No. Like, no. No. They just like, no. throw you into Dude. a... To it, a wood. It, they throw you into the woods. It's a tactical espionage to, game. They, they expect you to know that. You're, other, you're yes. supposed to figure it out. Yeah. You're really? supposed to figure it it's out. Crazy. You're supposed to figure out what to do. You're a spy, yeah. 
you have to be spy. Like not not like the kind you think where it's like you wear disguises and shit. Like Snake is just a, a dude who can just go through any yeah. what would I say like environment. He's like a, the best one of the best soldiers in the world pretty much. Right. Okay. And he like, can infiltrate compounds and shit, but the game is fucking confusing. Like I said, tactical espionage. You're literally like black ops yeah. doing crazy fucking missions. That no ordinary person can do. Not even, like, specially trained people can do it. Okay. You've got to be, like, the best of the best. So, like, in Destiny, when you pull out your ghost and you can see, like, where you have to go. Or they have that, that diamond that shows your next objective. Shit like that didn't exist in those games. No. It was literally a little cutscene. He'd be like, Snake, you got to get into this door and blah, blah, blah. But you don't know what door, fucking door he's talking about. Look for the blue door on the 12th floor. La, 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 la. And they'll give you a vague description. But how you get there, good yeah. luck figuring good it luck out. Good luck figuring it out. Yeah. And then not to mention, there's a whole literal, in that game, two-minute climbing scene on a ladder where you think it's going to build to something crazy, but you're literally just climbing a fucking ladder because it's a loading screen for the next area. You're almost playing, like, it's almost if you're playing a, a movie instead of a video game. Yeah. Because you'll play it for, like, 20 minutes, and then you'll have, like, a two-and-a-half-hour cutscene. Yeah. And you think I'm bullshitting. No. No, there's, like, I, I don't remember how, I think it was, like, 70 well, cut, seventy hours of cutscenes or I'm, some I'm shit like that. I'm exaggerating, but, yeah. I mean, he... They're, they're long, though. But he's not far off. Like, there's, there's, I think 70 hours is too much, but I, I think there really is, like, 18 hours of cutscenes or some shit like that in Metal Gear Solid 3. There's, there's, a, there's an obtuse amount of fucking cutscenes. The Destiny I wish I had. Right. Exactly. But, um, let's see here. Cutscenes alone. Four and a half four and hours and a half. Okay. of right. cutscenes in, in, in a game. That's literally longer than Endgame. <laughs> literally longer than Endgame. <laughs> literally shit. longer than Endgame. And, don't, and remember, in the middle of all that, you're also spending, like, hours trying to figure out what the fuck to do. Because it just yeah. drops you there and doesn't, and gives you vague things like Josh said. Which also has aspects of horror in the old ones, because sometimes mm -hmm. they do creepy shit. Yeah. Like the fact that one of the bosses, uh, Psycho Mantis, Psycho could Manus. read your uh, your memory card because we had those too. Yeah. Didn't have no internal hard Eight drive. Eight megabytes. I got. I still got my PlayStation One and PlayStation Two memory yeah. cards, bro. Four megabytes. Yep. Yeah. Man, that was some power back and then. And you'd be like, bro. "Oh, so you like to play Street Fighter?" And you're like, "What the fuck?" fuck? Yeah. Yeah. They would. It, he would control. They sure. would make it to where he could shut off your controller because they weren't wireless. You had to plug them into the system. Yeah. You would have to unplug your from player one port to player two, and then you can move your character. Yeah, but yeah. but it took so long for people to figure that yep. out. And that was another thing you would never know. I right. think now that's like against TOS for most. Um, it's against terms of service. That's crazy. Yeah, like I think I think it's um, games can't do that anymore. Oh shit! But like, yeah. they can't go into your like system yeah, files yeah, yeah. now. But also, we didn't have online gaming back then. No, we didn't. It was personalized, like. That's the why they got over. That's the why reason they got why Psycho Mantis yeah. said it is because it was words on the screen. Yeah. So it wasn't like he actually said it. Yeah, it yeah. was words on yeah, the yeah, screen. Yeah. It, it was programmed so, in, but it was yeah. only games that like... I think there was one default game they would always say if you never played it. But there were certain ones that if you played like Castlevania, yeah. they yeah. would say that. So you like to play Castlevania. Yep. But yeah. So, woo! Yeah. Horror 2. Horror 2. Uh, Celebrity Deathmatch was great. Woo. Yes. <laughs> We we never got our final thoughts on Celebrity Deathmatch. We kind of did. We kind of did, and then we just veered it away. Was it was influential as it was fuck. In, yeah, it was influential as fuck, and that led us to talking about other shit that was in, influential as fuck. Um, so, what the hell happened this week that we need to talk about? Anything crazy? Mm. Anything big? I know we wanted to talk, talk about football because we're super excited about that. Football. Football. Car. Uh, hold on. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. why don't we look over at our friend MacabDaily.com and see if they have anything interesting? Oh, MacabDaily.com, the place where we get all of our horror news because they are the dark side of pop culture. Damn, I'm getting smooth with it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Mm. My balls are so fucking moist right now. <laughs> What's this? Uh, Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights takes you back to the Upside Down and New Stranger Things house, Vecna's Curse. Nice. Probably because Stranger Things Season 5 was supposed to come out in, like, February or March or something of next year. And they worked out a deal for it previously before any of the strike shit happened. Hmm. Because they, they, they typically do that. When ha Halloween Horror Nights does mm. something, it's themed with something that's supposed to come out in the next few months. 
or it's something that's a big pop culture thing that they're trying to get back in the limelight because something's going to be happening with it soon. So that tells me the original release date of Stranger Things 5 was probably supposed to be in the quarter one of 2024. Sad. Yep. Uh, Friday Night meets Scott Pilgrim in upcoming series Nights, launching in October for Image Comics. Nice. Very cool. Oh, Shark Week, I think, is coming up soon. Yeah, so. Shark Week's coming up. <laughs> Shark Week is where millions of white people descend upon Discovery Channel and hear the same facts about sharks that they heard for the last 20 fucking years on Discovery Channel, but just updated every year with new graphical content and a new host. Oh. www.youtube.com. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Twisted Metal actually finally showed some car some stuff. Some R-rated car stuff, yes. That trailer was pretty dope. Uh, oh, shit. I, I completely forgot. I wanted to kind of talk about this next week, too, if we could add that in. Fucking 28 years later, officially confirmed. Yeah, 28 years later was officially confirmed literally the day that we were recording fucking Horror Wars last week. Yep. News hit about 28 years later. And we didn't know that the fucking news hit because we were trying to get the fucking stupid from not happening on the mics. Mm -hmm. which isn't happening today because apparently there was some sort of interference at my house yep. last week. So hopefully we can figure that out next week. But 28 years later, man, that's crazy. I thought that I always thought that they would do 28 months later and then 28 years. Later right. If, right. It, if it stayed right. popping, but it's so weird that that just got dropped. Yeah. And it is Danny Boyle. It is all of them. I think Killian Murphy is going to be an executive producer on the movie. Like they're really popping off with all the original people. So, yeah. Uh, Insidious the Red Door scares up the highest opening weekend for the franchise. That's pretty fucking dope. I know you're looking forward to yes. seeing that. Uh, we already t and then I think we're pretty much at the where we talked about Horror Wars awesome. last time. But um, I'm super excited for 28 years later. And Killian Murphy is confirmed to be in it. Yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, real quick for those that um, are part of Fangoria's uh, newsletter. They are giving, well, not giving, they're offering you the chance to go to an advanced screening of Talk to Me, mm. the movie about the hand, yeah. with the fucking crazy shit. There is showings in Philly. Um, I didn't look at the ticket prices, but if you are a member of the Fangoria news thing, they are sending out stuff for you to get invited to go see Talk to oh, Me. That's cool. Uh, two weeks before the movie comes out. Oh, hell yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then there was also one other thing. That I wanted to talk about, but I forgot now because I'm I'm still pretty high. Uh, <laughs> um, so with that, why don't we talk a little bit about some football? Football. Football. It's just I, I'm excited to finally have a sport to watch because I you know yeah. I kind of pay attention to basketball, little baseball, no yeah. hockey. Right. Nothing against it. I just mean I can't right. I can only handle so many sports. I have a favorite team in hockey, and I like hockey when it becomes playoff time. Yeah. But hockey and baseball, when you got over 80 fucking games a season, I'm not fucking watching you every goddamn game, dog. Yeah. I'm not. And same thing with basketball. Like, basketball has been in my life since I was little. But I don't follow it's just, basketball like that. But I have a favorite team. Like, basketball you know? is crazy, too, because, like, as someone, again, that doesn't pay that much attention to it, it's like, the finals just happened, and the season just started. It's like, right. holy shit, didn't it right. just end? Wait, the, the finals just happened. Literally two days later, let's have the draft. Yeah, it's like, holy what? shit, dude. As a fan of the NFL, that's crazy to yeah. us. Like, I, I think that's what it is, because... The NBA really doesn't stop. They just go into the fucking summer league. I, I just think that if, <laughs> if football was American football was all year round, I genuinely think I'd be bored with it. I, yeah. I, I just don't yeah. think I can take that yeah. much of the same sport all yeah. year. So, so props to anyone. That's no hate towards the other sports, but it's just not for me. Right. But football, man, American football. That that seventeen game season. I wish it would make it to eighteen games. Or actually. I wish they would just take away preseason and just make it a twenty game season. Some of the best days are like from like late October to the end of oh, the yeah. season when it's it's cold on the Sunday. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And you're making homemade chicken noodle soup yep. or chicken pot pie or chili. Or you or get a pizza or something. You get bro. a fucking pizza and wings. You light some fucking yep. uh, some fall candles mm. and you got your windows open. It's my favorite uh, time you got of year. fucking NFL blasting. You got coffee brewing in the fucking okay, background. Stop oh talking my about god! It I miss it so much. Oh my god! Those I'm fucking a fall whore. those hell yeah fall is, fall is so where awesome. it's at, hell man. Yeah. From from oh my god, 
I know people are like poo poo on the preseason, but bro, I just cannot yeah. wait. I cannot wait until middle of August when we start getting glimpse of what the 2023 yep. season is going to oh, look yeah. like. I cannot fucking wait. I love preseason because you get to see who's going to be on the team. Yep. You get to see the first the first interactions live of what these people have been doing. You know what I mean? In in these off months, how well they're gelling. You get the first glimpses of who your 52 is going to be on the field. All yep. that, all of it. I love preseason. Give me that shit. But do I wish that it was regular season games? Absolutely. That would be so damn. Regular season from August to like yeah. February? Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Five months off. All you got to do is you hear about the draft. You hear about OTAs. You hear about all that shit. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Training camps. Let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Oh, I can't wait. And especially because the Panthers actually look hopeful this year. <laughs> Until game three. Nah, 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 nah. That's the Ravens. <laughs> um, yeah, they'll, they'll, I feel like those egos are going to be a, a tad You feel like it's going to implode? Well, yeah, you told me, well, you said before we started podcasting here today that uh, that you saw some training videos. And, and they it just looked a little awkward. It just didn't the way look they promising, were. yeah. yeah, they looked, yeah. They, they looked, they're a stacked team. They're yeah. probably going to do some damage, yeah. but they, they're going to crumble because of the egos. Ain't yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no way that those egos aren't going to fucking collapse that team. But, uh, you know... I, I I hope that it doesn't collapse that team. I hope, like Same. you said, that that team goes on this fucking tear, man. And it would help because it would be my Super Bowl pick if they get the Super Bowl. Because right. all I need is the Lions to actually be good and make it. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. So. God damn. So close, yet so far away. So close and Football. so far. Yeah. I got a... Uh, do you have anybody at work that you talk football a lot with or anything like Not that? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's not. It's not time for the season. Okay. But like, I I had just started, like you know, getting used to the new shift around that time. So I okay. wasn't talking to no one. So now I got peeps I talk to. So I'm gonna. It's gonna okay. be some shit talk going on. All right. Cool. Because I know it's mostly Cowboys fans and Eagles fans. So. Awesome. Awesome. And see, that's why I love uh, my job, because, you know, you got. One person's a fucking Bucks fan, another person's a Broncos fan. Yeah. You got some Cowboys fans, you got some Eagles fans, you got some 40s Niners fans. You got like a lot of mixed up fans at my job, which is very uncommon for this area. Like yeah. super duper uncommon. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's even Giants fans at my job. Like it's I, fucking yeah, I crazy. Believe it. I believe it. It's crazy that I, I I've never worked at a place where there's been so many fans of like almost all the teams. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, legitimately, almost that's every crazy. team is represented at my job. Sheesh. And that's wild to me. Remember NFL Blitz, bro? NFL Blitz was such a good fucking game. Such a good. You remember NFL Street? Yeah. It's yeah. game time. It's game time, bro. NFL Street was fucking dope. Good times. Nostalgia cast. Nostalgia cast. And hey, NFL Street goes right back into Celebrity Deathmatch area because that came that came out on... I think in 98. First 98, one. 98, 99, uh, Nintendo 64 and all mm -hmm. that shit. Then it went over to the GameCube and all. Hell yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Same time frame. <laughs> extreme violence. <laughs> Bro, the 90s was so fucking extreme. Hell yeah. Everything was extreme in the 90s. Power Rangers. Championship. Shout out, the, shout out to Power Rangers. Shout out to Extreme Championship Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, everything was just so extreme. Shout out to fucking uh, uh, Capri Sun commercials from the oh nineties. <laughs> Everybody was wearing skateboard. Everybody was uh, wearing big baggy pants and riding skateboards. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. So, is there anything else that we uh, we have to talk about today? I think that's about it. I think we uh, had a good ramble cast. That was definitely very awesome. hard to tube. Ask. Very hard to. Um, so we're going. I, I think I'm going to make the call of this week and next episode. Well, this episode and next episode revealing episode 48 and 49 of Horror Wars, you know, as they mm -hmm. happen. But the third episode, we don't reveal episode 50. I don't want to reveal episode yeah, yeah, 50 no, no. on Horror Tube. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to reveal episode 48 right now. Drum episode roll. 48 was the original episode 50. Mm -hmm. That's how important this movie is. 
this was originally episode 50, but we have an episode 50 that we feel is more important. 100%. 100% more important. For a milestone episode, 1,000%. Yeah. For a milestone episode, we feel that episode 50 is much more important. Well, not much more. I, I'm not going to say much yeah. more important. But episode 48 is Night of the Living Dead versus Night of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. The original George A. Romero versus the 1990 remake. Featuring Tony fucking Todd. Featuring Tony fucking Todd, whose name we couldn't remember a few episodes yep. ago here on Horror Tube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because we were talking about Candyman for a moment. But um, Night of the Living Dead versus Night of the Living Dead. And if I'm not mistaken, Zombieland. No, no not Zombieland. Uh, Planet, Terror. Planet Terror. Planet Terror was Horror Club. And um, we got a little bit of tricks and treats coming up for this next episode of Horror Wars. Yep. Next week's gonna be pretty fucking amazing. I can't. I cannot wait to start on the script for Horror Wars. I absolutely cannot wait. It's going to be a really good episode. I got a couple games I'm thinking about using for next time. Too, All right. So. I think one of them we kind of discussed already. I think it was gonna be Zombies Ate Your Neighbors. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Ate your yeah. Neighbors, yeah. Yeah. I think Probably that's. Be on that. And I'm pretty sure we actually discussed it on a previous episode mm. of Horror Tube. So it's not like. Yep. It's not like, you know, we're, we're fucking revealing yeah. something crazy. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a real good one. So for that, that's harder to do. <laughs> I'm Josh. And I'm Rob. <laughs> and I'll uh, see you in two and two again. Shout out to Chuck Woolery. Shout out Chuck Woolery. <laughs> you fucking epic bastard, you. But we'll uh, see you guys next time on Horrible. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Johnny Gomez. And I'm Nick Diamond. I'd like to remind viewers that our show deals with mature themes, including graphic violence and extreme bloodshed. Let's hope it does. <laughs> and I don't think anyone will be going home disappointed tonight, Nick. <laughs> Wait, what the hell are these freaks doing? The fight is out of control. Let's get it on! Even without his feet, he's too fast for the Reaper. They're tearing up the ring and the fans. I told you, Johnny, this is what happens when you try to play God. Stone Cold, do something. Okay, hang on. And Natalie takes a spittoon to the head. The Dixie Chicks are in trouble. Setting her up for a Norwegian neck catapult. Look out, Drew! So even as a kid, I had such intrusive thoughts that this show really just allowed me to shut my brain off and watch the creators basically do their intrusive thoughts. And it was just so comforting to me in a way. And I also have a soft spot for Stone Cold because uh, he reminds me of my dad but that's a different story <laughs> and it was just great laughing my ass off even at like 9 or 10 I don't even know when this is Neo Zodiac speaking I love Celebrity Deathmatch uh, as I'm a huge fan of anything animated and has one of the best lines ever let's get it on <laughs>